Good morning, Thrivers. Welcome to another day of my Thrive Bible Devotions. Um, man, it is an exciting day. It's a new year. Um, you know, all that is just, you know, whatever. It's awesome. I'm excited. Let's move forward, shall we? Let's have a word of prayer today and uh, we'll get started. Lord, we just thank you so much for, um, man, your mercy and grace in our lives. Father, we're so thankful that you have a plan for us and that you uh, you use us uh, for your honor and for your glory. Lord, we just pray today as we uh, we dig into your word that you just open our hearts up and speak to us. Help us to receive it and to apply it. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Uh, Matthew, or not Matthew, James, uh, chapter number four. Now, we're actually pretty, we're kind of flying through James. Um, we have four and five left, just two chapters. We're already you know, uh, three chapters in, so um, it's amazing how fast this is going uh, compared to the book of Matthew, although Matthew was 28 chapters, wasn't it? We're going to read the first six verses today, and uh, we'll talk about those, all right? It says here, what causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it is to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealousy over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? But he gives more grace. Therefore it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let's let's stop there today. Let's talk about this. Uh, what an interesting passage this is, and it's um, you know, it, it speaks to the truth in the heart of our desires, our um, and then our actions as a result of our desires, right? It, it talks about here. It says, What causes quarrels and fights among you? And, and, and so let's just be truthful here for a moment, right? In the body, there are fights, there are quarrels, there are problems, right? And, and he says, what causes this? Well, quite simple. You, you have a war going on inside of you that you're not winning, that you're, you're allowing the wrong side to win, right? And, and, or somebody is. Um, you know, is it not this, that your passions are at war within you, your passions. So what are your passions? Well, you know, I would say a couple things here, right? Uh, he mentions uh, jealousy and covetousness. Um, you know, it's, it's the passions of the world. It's the passions of our flesh. It's our desires to want and to, you know, to, um, you know, our pride, all these different things in here. There's this, this, this side of it we call the sinful side. And the other passion is this passion to live and serve the Lord, right? And that passion comes from the Holy Spirit within us. It, it comes from Christ dwelling in us, and it's at war then with the flesh, right? And there's a war going on, a battle raging inside of us. Uh, sometimes we can really acutely feel that battle. Oftentimes, we're not paying attention to it, and when we're not paying attention to it, uh, most likely our flesh is winning. Yeah. Uh, and when the flesh wins, right, we then act in ways that we ought not be acting. We act, we we. Uh, it, it plays out in our lives as we we think wrongly, we act wrongly, right? We we you know we we are all for ourselves and not loving others, and it, it just plays out in that way. He says here, you know, why are there quarrels and fights among you? Well, the 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 the, the spirit is, is losing the battle inside, right? And and the flesh is winning, and, and so then it, it it plays itself out in quarrels and fights. Why? Well, it goes on, right? It says, hey, you desire and do not have, say, a murder. Now, we're not murdering people. I hope not. I mean, if you're murdering somebody, you got some serious problems. And hopefully the law will get you soon, right? Go turn yourself in. Um, but, uh, you know, it's the same idea, right? You're, you're destroying somebody else. You, you know, you're willing to destroy them um, in other ways, perhaps, uh, in those situations. And um, so... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, your passions are a war within you. You desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You covet. You want what someone else has, so you fight and you quarrel. He basically says that, listen, here it's simple. People think. So you don't have, right, you, you, because you're not asking. 
You don't have because you don't ask. And man, there's a thought right there, man. How many times do we, you know, we, we desire something and we don't even ask God for it? You know, instead we fight with someone else trying to get it, but we don't just sit there and go to the Father and say, Lord, you know, you know anyway, please help me with it. You know, give this to me or, or, you know, whatever. And, but then he says, hey, but you ask and don't have because you're asking wrongly uh, to fulfill your passions. So now we got to think about that, right? Well, hold on a second now. Are we asking so that we fulfill the flesh? Well, then we're not going to get that anyway. But if we're asking uh, for right reasons, for good reasons, for, you know, um, God-glorifying reasons, well, then, you know, he, he most likely will give it to you. And if that's where our passions are coming from, from the, from the Spirit, then we don't have to worry about what we have or don't have on the flesh. Right? Again, it comes back to that one verse. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things, which are everything we need to live, right? All of our, you know, daily sustenance and provisions, all these things will be given unto you. So we seek the kingdom and all this stuff gets, gets taken care of. It's that simple. And so when we ask in this area, right, we receive, right? It's, you know, uh, you, you ask and don't receive because you're asking wrongly. You're trying to fulfill the flesh. And so that's, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty telling here. Um, let's go on. That's called, I love this. You adulterous people. Right, you adult, you're, right, you're, you're, you're should be living and, and doing everything for, for the, for the spirit side, and yet you, you turn your back on that and you go after another love, which is your flesh, right? You adulterous people, and then oh, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Wow, guys, let's think about this. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. If you want to be friends with the world, you want to live for the world, then you're going to make war with God. And think about that's all that battle's happening inside of us. Man, guys, friendship with the world. You know, I have ideas what that might look like, and it's really a thing you need to figure out in your own, right? Inside of you, what is considered friendship with the world? You know, are you... Are you, are you really all about, you know, fulfilling the flesh, meeting the needs of the flesh, meeting the needs of the world around, around you? Or is it about feeding the spirit? I, I will say, I, I think there are things you can, I, you know, I don't think it's wrong to enjoy the world, enjoy life. It's wrong to be um, concentrated on fulfilling the flesh, right? We have to eat. That's fulfilling the flesh. But we don't have to overeat. We don't have to indulge um, extravagantly in that, right? We have to drink. But that doesn't mean we ought to be going out and, you know, and, and drinking it, you know, excessively, you know, and things like alcohol and that sort of thing. Um, you know, we, we, we uh, you know, you need to sleep. It doesn't mean be lazy. You know, it's, those are, those are, when you take it to extreme, you're going into the world. Now, there's just things that are just of the world, plain and simple, right? I mean, you know, and, and that's that's what he's saying. That that's that's wrong. When you're loving this side and you want to just fulfill these desires, that's the problem. And so we need to be careful, guys. It's friendship with the world is enmity with God. Right? Um, we are in the world. We we can't not be in the world, right? And, and we have certain things we need to fulfill in the flesh, but we don't need to. Um, overindulge or make that the primary um, reason for our existence, the primary thing we're after, the primary thing we're trying to trying to do. All right, you understand? You, you, you getting that? He then goes on here. Or do you suppose it is no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us? Right, he yearns jealously over the spirit which he has, uh, which he has made to dwell in us, and, and that's the whole thing, right? God is is yearning for the spirit to have control in your life uh, inside, and He gives us that spirit so that it can battle and, and 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 win the war inside of us. And it's just a matter of how much or what, where is our mind at? What are we trying to do? What are we focusing on? That's why being in the Word is important every day. That's why prayer is so important every day. Uh, you know, I was talking to someone the other day, and and um, they mentioned how 
they they didn't like an idea that was you know I guess of all the things we could focus on teaching people in in churches teaching people on the habits of the Christian life like reading your Bible and prayer and and those and by the way there are there are habits you ought to be making it wasn't as important to them as teaching Bible passages and and Bible study and. and I understand the importance of Bible study, but man, I really feel that if we can help people learn these habits that help us fight the, the, the war inside of us, the better, right? Prayer, study, meditating on the word, you know, these things are just so important. And so I just want to encourage you guys today, recognize the battle going on inside, right? Stop and recognize it. And then as we, throughout the day, meditate on this passage, and as we go about our days, our day today and our day tomorrow, Think about that war. What is going on and who's winning? Stop and consider that. And then get, and then, and then really move towards the spirit side. Right? Allow the spirit to have dominance in your life over your flesh. And when you do that, you're going to see a change in your life like you haven't seen before. You're going to start seeing um, things come together. You're going to start seeing the, the desires over here starting to change and your desires are moving towards what God would have for you in your life. And you're not going to worry about the, 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 the daily provisions that, you're, that you need. God's going to take care of those things and move you on, you know, as you move on forward. And that's the encouraging thing about this, guys, is that God is going to take care of our needs when we're focusing on Him. And when we focus on Him, then we're going to see a change in our lives for his glory and you're going to see those relationships in your life start changing as the spirit starts taking control all right guys i hope that was good for you today we'll see you again tomorrow god bless you all have a good one